Well, hey, welcome to In the Growth Space. I'm your host, David McGlennon, and I'm really excited that you've joined me here in this space. Now, before we get into the episode today, uh, would you just do me a quick favor? Would you scroll down to the rating and review section of your podcast app? And give us a rating and review. I just invite you to go ahead and, and hit pause and go do that right now. It would mean so much to me and my team um, because we want to continue to reach more leaders and we really want to grow and expand their lives and their leadership. So one of the things that I like to do here is just share some of the things that I'm personally working on in my own growth journey. And that's what this episode is all about. And I have to say that this one actually has me a bit nervous because I'm talking about something that I've never done before. And frankly, I don't know how I'll do at my first attempt. Nonetheless, here we go. <laughs> All right. So in this episode, I'm going to talk about a work sabbatical. Now, a work sabbatical is just an extended period away Um and it's, it's typically ranging from several weeks to a year. And a lot of times it's, it's taken for different reasons or just a variety of reasons. And, you know, it could be to travel. It could be to pursue, you know, uh, further education. It could, could be to take care of family or, or just simply take a break from, from work and, and recharge and refresh. And in American culture, um, at least outside of academia, um, there's a lot of people who view taking a sabbatical as a career setback. They have a fear that they're going to fall behind in their career or just lose touch with their professional network. However, research has shown that taking a sabbatical can lead to increased productivity, creativity, and job satisfaction. All right, so why am I talking about this? Well, this year in 2023, I'm planning a month-long sabbatical. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, actually, just saying that out loud gives me a bit of anxiety. So let me just give you a bit of context, though, first. So last year, um, I had a, a lot of big things that I, I took on in the realm of business. We expanded quite a lot and, and, and we added two new levels of inner circle groups to our offerings, which on the surface, you know, that's not too big of a deal, but coupled with two major live in-person events, one that we held in Atlanta with my mentor and co-founder of the John Maxwell team, Paul Martinelli, and, and, and the other one was my own inner circle summit that we held here in Pittsburgh. It was a very incredible uh, event. So there, there was a lot of activity here at Impact Leadership. And oh yeah, I also jumped into learning a new approach to convening and choreographing conversations that, that help unlock the intelligence, the wisdom and, 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 and potential of any group of people. And I did this training one week before my Inner Circle Summit in December. So all of that activity led me to thinking about my mission and my vision for both my own life and really the leadership of the company. So during some of my reflection time and personal development time, I had heard leaders talking about a sabbatical, taking a sabbatical from their work. And it really intrigued me. And it, it intrigued me so much that I felt like there was also this voice calling inside of me to do it. And as I processed through this thought, I shared it with my coach, Andy Hall. And for some of you, uh, you, you, you may have met Andy at the Inner Circle Summit, or if you know him even a little bit, you probably won't be surprised at what he told me when I shared this. He said, David, if you wanna make it happen, put it on your calendar right now. <laughs> so at the time we had the conversation, <clears throat> it was about a year out from when I was thinking about doing this. So after some thought and, and reflection, I actually put it on the calendar. 
However, I, I, I have to admit, I was not fully committed to it. And even though I put it on the calendar, my own self-doubt stepped in and, 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 and I knew in the back of my mind that I could just as easily pull it off the calendar. I, I wouldn't have to tell anybody else and, and, and I could just go on with my, with my life and my business. Now, I'm recording this episode in mid-March and it's still on the calendar. And the thing is, um, I'm starting to tell a few more people. And, and, and the thing that's propelling me forward to follow through is that I've been selectively sharing it with my inner circle and now <laughs> with the world, with you. <laughs> So if ever there was a time when I really needed my inner circle, man, it's right now. They have been so instrumental in helping me to keep advancing and keep advancing in the direction of my dream on this. Matter of fact, um, I'll get a little bit more vulnerable here and, and just share part of the conversation that I had with, with Andy uh, recently even and, you know, I, I just have to say, he, he is a world-class coach. He can't even just help himself, but ask such good and profound questions. He asked me what the sabbatical meant to me and essentially why it was important to me. And I got to admit, I, I, I had to stop and think for a moment. But what came up for me was this. You know, I'm finishing my fifth decade of life and, and I'm starting my sixth this year. So it seems to me that the start of a decade, at least lately for me, has, has been a moment in time when I really reflect and I want to refocus my intentions. And, and actually, if I think about it, it started when I turned 50 and I, I, I began to have what I call my awakening to my purpose and, and living a, a truly intentional life. And, and that was what led me to start Impact Leadership Consulting because I saw so many companies being stuck in the old world way of thinking and the old world way of acting. And I, I wanted to help them. And I knew that I could make an impact on company. I wanted to take into account all of their stakeholders, not just the shareholders. You know, the conscious capitalism movement has been a constant companion to my thinking and, and my growth and, and really to my work. So as I told Andy, um, I'll, I'll be turning 60 later this year. And, and why this is important to me is that I want to refocus so that I'm really incredibly clear on my direction and I can direct my energy toward the things that will make the greatest impact and really fulfill my mission. You know, it's so easy to get off track with intentions. So I want to take time to really evaluate where I need to be putting my attention. All right. You may be asking yourself, so David, how are you going to do it? When are you going to do it? And those are both great questions. The when I can answer completely, and that's going to be July of this year, July of 2023. It's on my calendar, still there. <laughs> and now the how part, well, that's the part that I'm still working out. But if I take my own teaching on the Henry David Thoreau quote, and that quote says this, it says, if one advances confidently in the direction of their dream and endeavors to live the life they have imagined, they will meet with success unexpected in common hours. And if I take that, and if I live that out, if I take that quote and live it out, then I'm going to keep advancing confidently. I'm keeping the way that I've imagined this sabbatical in my mind during my meditation time. And so I'm keeping it top of mind. And I'm also doing a heck of a lot of planning. And since I do a lot of coaching and coaching, you know, leaders and executive leaders, and I facilitate a number of inner circle groups, I've hired Andy to take over those for a month. So that's step one in my advancement. 
<laughs> and I'm working on step two in my advancement right now. And what I'm doing is I'm evaluating the, the administration side of the business. And one of the things that I'm doing here is I'm, I'm creating a list of admin tasks that need to be done. And I'm actively discussing solutions with some of the key partners that I have and people that can, could help me. Now, beyond that, I haven't really had much of a chance to, to actually design what the sabbatical will, will look like, like what I'll do during it. But disconnecting from work is something that I've never done, never in my life. So I, I have to admit, it's, it's a bit scary. And one thing I do know, though, is that I'm going to be taking extended walks. I'm going to be out in nature. I'm going to be able to think and, and also have extended time journaling so that I can write down those thoughts and you know, really get clear on my vision for the next decade. And I may do some travel with Cindy. Um, I, I will for sure do some extended reading. And I know that I'll uh, do that reading just to be able to fuel my, my thinking and my imagination. Now, one of my fears in, in sharing this so publicly, um, it, it, it's that the, the, the fear is that I'm gonna sound like I'm boasting or, or, or bragging. And, and that certainly isn't my attention. Um, I really just wanted to share, you know, with you, my podcast listeners, where I'm pushing myself out of my own growth space and, and out of my own comfort zone and, and what I'm wrestling with right now. And, and the thing is, as I thought about it, this is the end of my seventh year in business. So it kind of feels like a good time to do it. You know, I've been reminded as I've been going through this process of the sabbatical year that happens every seventh year in the Jewish culture and tradition. And I don't know if, if that has, you know, anything to do with why I'm feeling called to do this, but I can tell you, I'm certainly not taking a year off. <laughs> so in any event, um, I, I am in the midst of, of, of doing the planning for this time away. And I, I have to admit, sometimes it's just a bit overwhelming, but it really is helping me to rethink so many things in the business, in the processes that I currently have. And, you know, one thing that I know is that we're going to be ending um, season two of In the Growth Space sometime before July. Um, and that'll give us a time to be able to regroup. And, and I'm sure that part of my time away is going to be thinking about how to create the next version of the podcast. And, you know, another thing that I'm, I'm definitely going to work through while I'm on sabbatical is just getting clarity around what I want the next season of life to look like. And that way I can go create it. You know, so often we go through life and we're not intentional about it. I just don't want to do that. I've got one life. And I want to be very purposeful with it. I want to be sure that I fulfill the purpose that God created for me here on earth. And I, I should say here too, that I recognize that I'm super fortunate to be able to do this. And I am incredibly grateful to be in this position to even consider doing something like this. It's definitely not something that I'm taking lightly and I really am viewing it as a growth experience all the way around. Now, you may not be able to take an extended sabbatical, at least in this season of your life, but I want to encourage you to think about how you can be very intentional with your life. How might you be able to take time, really make the time to get clarity on your own vision for your life? You know, we all have time that we can set aside to think and recharge and be refreshed. And, you know, if you're deliberate with your vacation time, you can really disconnect and, and gain your own sense of recharge and, and, and develop your own life vision. One of, the, one of the resources that I'll be using as I go into sabbatical um, is the book called Living Forward by Michael Hyatt and Daniel Harkavy. Um, they've got a life planning process in there that I'll draw from as I create my own vision. But, but for now, I'm just simply advancing one step at a time, 
I, I still have projects that I'm working on, a lot of projects that I'm working on until that time, until July. As a matter of fact, by the time this episode airs, uh, I'll, I'll be at the Turning Point Retreat in Atlanta with Paul Martinelli and Andy Hall. And then I'm going to go to Portugal to scope out the next elite inner circle retreat. And more importantly, most importantly, also to celebrate my 34th wedding anniversary while we're there. So what ideas has this episode sparked for you? What's something that you're noticing coming up for you? How could you take action on something that I've shared in this episode? How about this? If you want some accountability, why don't you just send me a note, david at davidmcglennon.com and let me know. I'd love to hear what you've taken from this uh, episode and, and, and what you're planning to implement for yourself. Well, thanks so much for listening in once again, and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next episodes. We've got a couple of really great ones coming up. Uh, we're going to discuss some different aspects of diversity and belonging and the generations in the workplace, the diversity of workplace generations. And trust me, it's going to be some episodes that you're not going to want to miss. So until next time, my friends, be well and stay in that growth space. Thank you.